So today uh, I'd like to talk about uh, some of the automation options in SharePoint Premium. So a little about me, I'm Leon Armston, uh, Head of Content AI at IntelliJ in the United Kingdom. I'm a Microsoft MVP in M365, but I yeah, specialize a lot. My history is in uh, SharePoint and uh, I like this new added uh, AI layer on top of it, so SharePoint uh, Premium. I blog quite a bit uh, on leonarmston.com, active on Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, etc. But uh, yes, as Vesta said, I'm at uh, MVP Summit, so uh, yeah, in my hotel, but looking forward to going to sessions uh, soon. So the agenda today, what I'd like to discuss, give you a brief overview of what is SharePoint Premium, and then talk about the SharePoint Premium developer story, uh, give some demos with some patterns that I've learned for uh, deploying some SharePoint Premium assets uh, programmatically, and then uh, just summarize and yeah, give you some steps to find out more. So what is SharePoint Premium? So you have, I love this graphic, so SharePoint, my history is uh, SharePoint, as I said. So yeah, SharePoint in, is in the middle. SharePoint rules everything. Uh, so we can see that um, around uh, SharePoint, there's lots of uh, reliances on SharePoint. So SharePoint is a storage layer. Um, it is used for uh, M365 backup to backup SharePoint, uh, M365 archive to archive SharePoint sites. It uh, integrates with Azure for identity, for graph, for programmatically, for Power Platform, for SharePoint embedded. Um, it is the source of um, information for Copilot. It works with Teams, with Viva, with Wanderer. And then you have uh, SharePoint Premium in the, in the top. Uh, corner, so that's the advanced uh, AI aspect uh, of SharePoint. So SharePoint Premium, it's a set of cloud content management capabilities that bring advanced AI automation and management to business processes at the center of every organization. So we see down here in yellow, we see content um, in all three lines so it is all about the uh, content so uh, SharePoint Premium so we've got content experiences that optimizes critical business processes content processing that organizes your content to maximize your content so it's putting your content uh, to work and then we have the content governance pillar which is uh, more for the system administrators, but it's yeah, it's simplifying that management and security of your uh, content, which is pertinent in the co-pilot world where we don't want to overshare anything. So we'll just go, I'll just give you a brief overview of what, what is there uh, with SharePoint Premium at the moment, but as part of the content experiences, we're boosting productivity with high value document solutions and document hubs. So. I'm not going to read uh, this line by line, but uh, what we have at the moment is uh, content query. I'll just pick out some highlights, some annotation, uh, PDF merge. We have what's coming soon, a business documents app in Teams. So that's like a contract management solution. We have um, the experience is coming to Microsoft Word for document generation. We're going to have AI driven deviation. E-signature, that's a favorite that's only available in the uh, USA at the moment, uh, but that will enable uh, you to electronically sign um, documents uh, from your tenant. And another one that I'm quite looking forward to is the documents portal. Uh, so that's an external uh, site that you can um, share documents uh, to from their original location and then your external uh, people can, or can uh, come in and yeah, view those documents, maybe uh, e-signature them uh, perhaps. So that's one I'm looking forward to. So content, the content processing pillar, this is historically uh, what um, SharePoint Premium was before, so uh, 
when it started in its early days as uh, Project Cortex, and then it became SharePoint Syntax, and then it became uh, Microsoft Syntax, and then yeah, as of November last year, was renamed to Microsoft Premium. But historically, the Syntax part was AI on documents, uh, so the document processing part. So that's identifying types of documents, so the classification, and then you train the AI to maybe pick out particular fields uh, from from those documents. So you might want to yeah pick out a date from a um, a, a letter or a um, value from the contract. Um, we then have a uh, content assembly, which is uh, where you can use existing documents to create uh, templates uh, to create templates to generate other documents. So you may have a letter. Uh, you can um, create a template and then um, rather than have to fill out a letter 20 times to send it to 20 people, you can use a template to auto um, send it to those 20 people. We have OCR image tagging, which I'm going to uh, discuss today, taxonomy tagging, document translation, and then we have some autofill columns, um, which is coming in 2024, where you will be able to talk, uh, describe what you want to do with the columns uh, to a GPT, and it will um, um, scan the documents according to what you've described um, and tag them as uh, PII detection, redaction, and multi-label classifier. So the content governance part, as I've already said, this is more for the SharePoint administrators, but this is uh, SharePoint. This used to be known as uh, SharePoint advanced uh, management. Um, so this is using tools to manage the content lifecycle and control access to your content. So we have stuff like data access governance, restricted access control, uh, insights. Um, so what I want to talk about is the uh, developer story. So I want to uh, list what options are available for automating um, SharePoint Premium, either via code, via shell, via um, document library rules, via Power Automate. So traditionally, um, the Microsoft uh, Syntax, it's still called the Microsoft Syntax REST API at the moment, it's still being uh, renamed. But uh, as I've said, it was all about yeah, processing uh, documents with AI and creating models uh, with certain rules to yeah, either identify documents or classify or both, uh, sorry either to identify documents um, and the, the, which was the classification and then the extraction where you're extracting certain values from the documents. So we have, we can create models, we can um, apply models, we can uh, update model settings, we can batch delete, but the, yeah, this is all part of the, uh, yeah, the, the historical uh, SharePoint uh, REST APIs. So those REST APIs, uh, we have um, yeah, PMP PowerShell, which uh, can talk to those uh, REST APIs, but um, there are yeah, commandlets to uh, yeah, do, that, do those commands, so getting the uh, Syntax model. And then also uh, new uh, to PMP PowerShell, I think in uh, version 2.40, there are now SharePoint embedded uh, commands. So yeah, getting the containers. Um, PMP Core SDK, um, PMP Core SDK um, provides an extract abstraction layer over the actual API uh, calls being made. So you just call PMP Core SDK, but underneath that, it's maybe calling MS Graph or the REST commands. Um, so that's what the PMP PowerShell is using underneath. Uh, we have SharePoint Embedded. This is probably a, a session on itself, but uh, this is an API-only solution that enables app developers 
to harness the power of SharePoint as a fileless file store. So this is headless SharePoint. So we're using you know, SharePoint as a repository. So we could have a say a .NET uh, app and uh, use SharePoint as the storage layer and have that um, have the rich uh, SharePoint compliance story or search uh, story. Um, but yeah, it's all API driven uh, using uh, Microsoft uh, Graph commands. Um, so as, as part of Microsoft Graph, there is um, there's Graph data connectors to, to SharePoint. There is also some Graph commands uh, for Syntax, uh, sorry, SharePoint Premium. So three patterns, what I'd like to demo today. So I just want to uh, show three features of SharePoint Premium. So document translation uh, using document library rules and then enabling the library for that image uh, tagging with PowerShell. Um, and then taxonomy tagger, but I'll, I'll show some examples as I go into my demos. So what a uh, recent cool feature that's come to uh, SharePoint Premium is the ability to have, say, a document uh, in English. So we can see a full document here and get this translated directly from a document library into a, a foreign foreign language. Uh, there are uh, it supports 133 languages, so we've got a lot of uh, different uh, users as your translation service uh, behind the scenes. But um, I, what I've done here is I've got a, a document library uh, rule, and when I change this value here to a foreign language, it will then update it. Um, copy the uh, documents and then uh, produce it. Uh, in say, uh, let me go into edit here, we'll put it into Swahili. And what, what this will do, it's not letting me, uh, so that was, what, what this will do will be change the documents uh, into, um, so we see one of my uh, previous documents, I pick the one, so it will keep the existing format and then uh, translate it uh, into um, a foreign language. So now what I want to do, let me just get to my tabs, is I want to show um, an image tagging feature. So Within a document library, uh, we can turn on SharePoint Premium uh, image tagging, um, which then get, analyzes the images and just uh, supplies descriptive uh, words uh, about what it sees in the image. So we can see for this one, we've got creek, wall, uh, landscape, um, which they are just um, special taxonomy uh, columns. So we can go into edit the uh, columns and we can see that uh, it is just a manage metadata column. Um, but we can see this property here that uh, automatically tag images with detected uh, objects. So we can see that that's ticked uh, yes. So. So imagine the scenario, you want to provision a project site and you want to add a, a, a document library called images to um, every uh, project project site uh, and you want to turn on uh, image tagging. Traditionally, you would have to go to the uh, library and you would have to configure image tagging and you would have to click enable here. This library already has it enabled, but if I want to do that programmatically, there is a, uh, this is the script uh, to add it. So it's adding the special image tagging uh, column. This is all on my uh, blog, so you could uh, yeah, download this. Um, but 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a library called image like image tag two. And now I'm just going to run this. So what this is doing is adding a new image tag uh, field from the XML. It's adding the image tag columns to the default view. It's adding a thumbnail and then if I go to site contents, find my image tag two, we can see the new library has been deployed with image tags here. And what I can do here is I can drag and drop some images. And then within five minutes, uh, these will be tagged with descriptive keywords. So how this all uh, will then appear is as we as we as we know that the documents are tagged. So then uh, if they're tagged, we could say search for all of the uh, documents that are tagged with nature, uh, for example. And now I, I've just extended this with uh, PMP uh, Modern Search, but we can now see all of our images that are, are tagged uh, with uh, nature. Now I want to show taxonomy tagging. So within your organization, you might have some existing uh, terms. So. Um, this example is using uh, airlines, so within my term store is a list of uh, airlines. And I've got a, lo a lot of aviation incident reports, and within those aviation incident reports, they mention Pacific um, Airlines. So what I what this does is you add, um, you have a library, uh, you add uh, your existing taxonomy uh, column to the library, but then there is this um, this um, button down the bottom to automatically tag tag documents with terms. So you add your um, taxonomy term, and then you um, change the property to automatically tag documents and link it to your term. So you can see I'm linking it to my airlines uh, term uh, term set here. And that's all I need to do. Now when I add documents uh, to the library, it will the AI will summarize those documents and say this one contains um, this the summary contains American Airlines, uh, British Airlines, uh, Serene Air, so automatically tag them. So that's really quick process to uh, get your doc documents tagged and um, ident identified. So I do have a pattern to uh, to do that. Um, but basically what this is doing, um, we're going to create a new library, add a new list, and then we're just adding our taxonomy column as normal using PMP PowerShell. Uh, but then we just have to change a property. So is uh, DocTax um, enabled? So I'll just go back to my slides. I'm not going to uh, demo that one because I've talked you through the process of uh, of uh, adding the uh, taxonomy columns and changing it into uh, enabling it for taxonomy tagging. So to find out more, there's a few uh, blog articles I can blog, uh, share that share these in the chat. A um, few steps to find out more. And yes, yeah, thank you.